States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If you all have a chance to take a look at the regular meeting minutes and also the budget session minutes of July the 11th. Uh, regular meeting minutes first. Any corrections, additions? If not, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes. So, so move 27. Second. Who's in favor? Okay. How about uh, July the 11th budget session? Any corrections or additions? I would entertain a motion to move. Second. Moved by Garrett, seconded by uh, Councilman Goodman. Those in favor? Okay, thank you much. All right, we've got a public hearing to start off with tonight. So without further ado, I'll open the public hearing. Um, Theory plan office uh, on impaired structures. Heather, would you like to take the floor? Sure. And All if right. you said no, I don't know what I was going to do. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, you should have received the email later this afternoon if y'all received it for the yeah. current photos and the updates that I've talked to. So most of these, this will be the third time we've talked about these. A couple of them's new. Uh, so the first one you should have received was 1600 Wallace Avenue. I don't know that anyone's here that I've talked to. I talked to Nicole, which is one of the property owners, on July 3rd. She was supposed to call back on July 17th with a game plan on getting the property structure cleaned up and repair or remove the home. Um, financially, they don't have it, and I never heard back from her. Um, so I guess tonight I'm looking for... Most of these orders, all of them to be affirmed and then go from the next step on how you want them to take care of this. Um, so this one, I haven't heard back from her. I'm not sure what their intentions are. No one lives there. It looks terrible. So just, it really needs removed, I believe, but it's been vacant for so long. Is this the same owner that had the house that Jackson just demoed? Nope. Um, their last names are... Beck, I believe, this one. Uh, Bobby Barnes and Nicole Beck are the owners of this one. Is that NES or NS? NES. Some of these addresses have been on this list for seven years. This is my third time bringing them. They've been brought to you before. Before, before yes. me, yes. 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 Um, so yes, it's time we need to get these We're affirmed. We're taking the can around the block for the yeah. uh, And then... By the way, the lady who had complained that uh, led to the last action we took with the tearing down of the house that was going to fall on her property, she said, that's a really nice thing. So yeah, you probably board. got one, too. Yeah. I forwarded it to him. Okay. okay. It's, uh, it's tough duty, folks, but uh, at some point, uh, on the recommendation of Heather, and I, I've seen all these properties, I've been to them. And there's a few more that aren't on this list. The one over in Race Street, we're going to have to pull the string on that at some time. We have a couple. I think one of them I spoke with Andy Schatz about, and they were trying to get someone in line. I mean, they did contact us once they got the letter, so they didn't blow us off. So they were trying to get some financially and then someone that could help them with get it cleaned up. Um, yeah. So they're working on that one. Yeah. And well, again, that one's eight years that I know of. Yeah. Uh, and the one, then there's one over on Fulton Avenue that uh, keeps coming. We get complaints almost weekly. Uh, Ninety percent of those complaints are probably the residents. But yeah, the neighbors. It, yeah, yeah, but I meant the person that lives there because I don't think he's a very nice neighbor. But for us, since he put the privacy fence up, what we can't see, we can't violate for. So that one's kind of out of our hands. Yeah, I can sure empathize with the neighbors right next door and across mm -hmm. the street, though. Yeah, so. yeah. 
with all the Andy's calls now, I guess. One, uh, <laughs> we're kind of in the same boat. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can do. There's not, it's just, they're not neighborly to each other, so they just keep calling and complaining. Well, and I get it. I've been down to that. Oh, I do too, but. I mean, the privacy fence, uh huh. You can still drive down the alley and see a mess. Uh, a guy to the, uh, to the south wanted to have a, uh, ceremony for his son's graduation from high school in the backyard. He had to call it off because of his neighbor. I don't know. Anyway, those, those aren't even on the list, but these that are have been here a long time. Franklin would be a zoning ordinance anyway, so it wouldn't come to you, but the race street. Um, try to give people time to do call and talk to us and try to, you know, come to a remedy for it. I know it's financially hard for everyone, especially if you're not living there and it's a bunch of repairs or it needs torn down. So we try to help and work with people. It's the ones that ignore it and don't make it cheap. Try it out. Heather, before you move on, I know that 1600 Wallace is another one just on the other side of 16th Street. I don't know if it's on your list. I didn't see it on this list, but I know if it's on your radar or not. I would say 1590 or whatever, 99 something. But then, if you're at one place, you look at so one window and see one and see the other one. Oh, okay. It may be. Um, I said the constituent could or bring my attention, and she also said there may be squatters in one or the other. So I don't know. Well, it could possibly be this one. I'm not sure. What, it's on Wallace. It's just, is it on Wallace or on? I believe it's either on Wallace or 16th, but it's same, same corner, it's the same intersection. One on the north side, one on the south oh, side, okay. 16th. I think they just moved that, didn't they? I think we, I drove by all these today and I think that one just got moved because it was horrendous. So North side or south side? The north side of it. Okay. Because it, this one's on the south side. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay so on the north side. Okay. I'm sure we can't miss it. Okay. And it may be on our list. Um, <coughs> these are just ones that. For, for today. Yeah, we need to get them. Got to turn right. something done and get them out of here. <laughs> what are what are you recommending per property? You want to take the first one? What are you recommending? Uh, demolition. That would probably be the best. It so looks bad. I would affirm the. It's pretty unsafe. Condemning of the property. Well, your your action is to affirm the order from Heather's office. Right. And once that is done, we can. We can proceed with petitioning the court, and if we need to make demolition part of that, we can. What, what's the uh, responsibility for uh, the council and, and the administration on uh, a situation where you're kicking something around the block like this for years? Well, and, when somebody gets hurt, what, what happens there? Yeah, um, that'd be, you know, in terms of liability for the city, um, that would be virtually impossible. The, the city has. The same kind of immunity uh, for official actions. Uh, the best thing it can do to protect itself is to make sure it's on the list. You know, uh, it's not the city doesn't become the guarantor of, of pre preventing harm. Uh, it has a broad responsibility uh, for public safety to make sure it's uh, pursuing these things. It's not the guarantor that it's curing them all, and so. seeing the individual facts, that's, that's really all I can say, is uh, if, if report after report results in no action, that's one thing, but bringing it to Heather's office is action, bringing it here is action, so that, that counts. Okay, is there any, any point in time when it moves from being on a list to a public nuisance situation? Well, you know, public, public nuisance has its own definition. This is, this is working through the unsafe building statute. One of the things, one of the things you have in front of you that will, I hope, expedite this stuff in the long run, is to make the uh, um, make the Board of Public Works the body that can have these hearings. Most communities, that's how it's handled. And I think moving that can expedite a lot of this stuff because uh, twice a week, uh, because you you can uh, uh, bring people in frequently. So, 
point I'm thinking of dealing with uh, three folks at the administrative level as opposed sure. to seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. So you can take an individual go to a, a firm, uh, uh, or you could wait until she's presented them all and, and then solicit public comment on that. Event. You should vote until you solicit public comment. So if if you're going to do it one at a time, you need to solicit public comment after before each vote, or you can have her present all of them and just do it. Is it a situation where you put all of them in the same category? You would make the uh, assessment that all of them should be uh, uh, demoed? No. That's okay. So but we would take... be affirming our action now and then we would pursue on the next yeah. action that needs to be taken. The, the, the council's not making the decision to demo. I want to be clear. The council's just affirming Heather's office's order. Good. So you would, Go on. you would want to take them one at a time. Right. Um, well, I, I think we can affirm everything. Yeah. I mean, we're just, her actions can be different on each house. Right. We're just affirming each different action. I mean, these have all been before us. This is the third time. I would yeah, make I, a motion to affirm the order. Do them all at once. Yeah. All of them. Okay. Any, uh, any public comments? Tillman did come in and get some permits. Um, he was unable. He was going to be here tonight, but he was unable with family emergency. But he got permits for both properties. And we couldn't give him the full permit because he has to have a registered electrician and plumber. But he's hoping to have both of them done by before winter. So. Okay. Did you see the the 129 East 14th Street? The improvements that they've been doing. Yes. Okay. Because um, he got a permit also, and the dumpster was on site. Um, so pretty much, I think there's only two or three that I haven't spoken to. Um, I think Hazen's had a little bit of cleanup too, but the roof needs repaired. It's just falling in. And well, that one again has been on the list for eight years. I, I know when we did Monroe Street project over there, people were saying, okay, you got the street looking great. How about that one house? And it's changed hands, what, two or three times in that period of time? Yeah, he's had it for quite a while. Okay, well, okay. you know, yeah. So he did get a permit last year to redo the roof, but nothing's been done. So. Okay, uh, any more comments? Any comments from the council? That did entertain closing the public meeting. So moved. <coughs> okay. The meeting is closed, and uh, now I will put it on the table. But somebody want to make a motion to uh, affirm Heather's I'll process make, here? Make the motion to affirm Heather's process. Second. Heather's made the motion, seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? And it's unanimous. Thank you, Heather. And again, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Okay, uh, old business update on proposed yard waste leaf pickup ordinance. Modification ordinance 4 2014. See ordinance 4 2023 for appeal. Okay, Heather, you're next. We, we tabled it last month. Um, so, Andy, one question. Uh, we talked about this and we, we take this action. You said we could handle it as a matter of policy. Who would set that policy? Would it be the department head or would it be the mayor's office? Well, I mean, the, the department head can set any policy subject to board public works. Uh, uh, and so it, it, I would think something like that probably the board public works would be consulted okay. and, and approve a policy like that. But yeah, that could just be done as a policy. So, all we, we would be doing is removing that section of the ordinance and then we would look to between the board of works and the department head to set the policies that we talked about in the, in the committee meetings one being 
it's time limited where the city will pick up the debris um, and then after that anything needs to be put in the bags that we put the leaves in um, no bags over 50 pounds I guess we have a problem with bags getting stuffed with sod and make those pretty heavy for our guys so we want that limited um, there is no we can't tell you what the financial impact is going to be it could be positive it could be negative so if we take this action tonight we're we're kind of going out there um, we felt that putting in the policies that we discussed would mitigate some of what we deal with but if you have bad actors there's I don't think anyone can tell us what the impact financially is going to be so my personal opinion is if we take this action we monitor it for a year and if if it's a detrimental cost to the, the department we have to take a hard look at whether we continue that program or not that's that's where we were coming from as a committee so I just wanted that to be said out loud so everyone knows what we're voting on if we do that there's, there's no guarantee it's going to save the city money it could cost us money because if we're removing that um, so the contractors will start leaving that and it could be more pickup so yeah we're already starting to see it a little bit so people sense the blood and the water uh, I would like to see it uh, if you're going to go ahead and, uh, and vote it in and, uh, it will be held until 2024 we're not ready to be very honest with you I mean you sat here that night and talked to that lady and said you know we need to start looking at what we can do and not what we can't do well, I'm telling you right now we can't handle all of it we've got eight people we need at least two more CBLA licenses uh, for these people before the season even starts this year, or we'll be down to just a couple of leaf machines. So there, there's a lot of work to do to uh, increase that activity by two. Um, and that, that, that's all I'm saying. We've got uh, uh, orders stretched to the limit right now. And I, you know, he'd be here saying the same thing tonight that he's worked all day with Randy over on uh, Manitou Heights. Yeah, and I believe he briefed us on that situation last month about the C, you know, discovering that we need to have yeah, CDLs to pull those around because of the weight of those units. And and well, in in the the budget session, you guys did uh, give him some more money so he can get a couple more people, but uh, that's going to be continuous. Uh, the more services, the more. You're going to have to have this kind of support. They don't come for free. But we're not doing it all year like we do now, right? The committee, the, the, Bob, do you remember, was it one month we picked up or two months? We were shooting for about a four to six week period, realizing it depends on weather. I mean, if you, I mean, the leaves don't coordinate themselves to just drop. I mean, if you get cold weather, they can all drop at the same time and we'll have a mess, but it, it'll be slower. I think we all recognize that it would be slower. Well, sure. that, that's the thing. When we came in, uh, it was boy, it was so haphazard, and it was whoever called, they ran and got their leaves, and it was a mess. It's kind of like running a factory and having a backlog where you're jumping every which way to satisfy the last customer that called. You'll never work yourself out of that. So we divided the city up into quarters, and we said, <coughs> okay. This week we're going to be over in this section of the city. This week we'll be in this section, and then you can plan on that. And that seemed to have worked out pretty well. We've been able to go through the city three, four times in a season, different places. That will slow down. And then the rest of your week back, as I understand, for those, and that's kind of the department that decided that part of the thing. Like this time period, you're supposed to have it back. Bang. Yeah. Now, if you got what I've been noticing is that we are seeing a lot. There's been a lot of tree trimming and sized limbs showing up, showing up, and different. But I, from here, yeah. talking to Wayne a time or two, it sounds like the people are calling some in some cases and telling me, "Hey, I, I did this, and I did it myself." That time, I've not seen as many piles as I did say, three weeks ago. Because the thing is, is living in this community, I get the opportunity to put my stuff out there as I please. I just do, okay? Which is phenomenal. No other community does that. 
Okay. They have these time limits, and if you want to do it, then it's your expense as the as the city owner. So isn't that what we're trying to accomplish? Is to say you either get it out there during this time, or then you know what? It's some kind of on you. You know, I, I mean that's the way other communities run their their stuff. It's it's on you. You know, as as a city. We don't need to be 100% responsible for every city owner. And I gotta tell you, I'm sorry, but I, I'm like cutting my own throat there. You know, because I love living right there on Main Street. I can put out a whole tree, and my <laughs> golly, it goes within a week, you know? So if I realize that I can't do that anymore, guess what, I gotta realize I can't do that anymore. Right, isn't that the decision we're making? Is, is this is the time frame we have. And if you don't get your stuff out there, no. then it's on you. Our action tonight would not be stating that. We would be removing the section that says the city will not pick up if it's okay. removed by a contractor. Then it would be on the department head, possibly the Board of Works, to set the policy. Okay. What, we, what came out of the committee was we, we suggested yes, we you know we limit it to a small time, a smaller time frame because we pick up. Sure. Good, but three, three possibly years. four months, pretty much. Absolutely, um, do a wonderful job. So, uh, again, the, the big, the big problem is I can't talk numbers. I don't. No one knows what the numbers are. Sure. Well, it was the lease that part. I mean, just lease in general. We we decided not to do anything with the twigs. And the, right. But the leaves is all lumped in there together. And, uh, now, if you put these out now, later, you got to have a bag. Mm -hmm. okay. True. We had a, and, and this is yard what waste, I, Yard waste in yeah. general, except for big trees or limbs and stuff. We had about half a dozen places last, through last winter. One of them was on Main Street, where the leaf pile was half the size of this dais up here. Set all winter, because they didn't get them out when they were supposed to get them out. And I hate that. You drive down the street on Main Street, and there's a pile of leaves that big, and you know that somebody's going to call next spring and say, you know, my grass all died. Well, well it's the homeowner's responsibility. I, I mean, that's just all part of it. It's, it doesn't matter if you live in another community, that's what they do. You know, so it kind of is what it is. We've been darn lucky in this town. So to have to limit it, I don't understand why it's an issue. Like I said, it's cutting my throat. I like to get out there and do my leaves or trim my trees whenever I feel like it. And if I have to start watching the calendar, it's going to be hard. <laughs> Any about it. If everybody knows about it, and that's, what, that's the way we start living, that's just the way we start living can't move to another community and not have it any different. You just can't. So the mayor, I say the, the mayor and the superintendent will get calls. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, again, it helps if the people making the decisions understand the situation. Oh, I tell people when they come watch. <clears throat> I tell them how it is. Trust me, I hear a lot of complaints. They just say, hey, what would you do? Uh, I never looked at it that way. So, no, they don't. <laughs> I thought, I thought, oh, I I thought see. we were doing three readings, but I thought we did one reading. You already right. had yeah. one reading. Okay, yeah. 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 You have one reading. At least that's just one minute, so you have one reading. Table the second, third for tonight. Right. Yeah, we so were just talking green. leaves. We were talking. Okay. We're just dealing with leaves. Um, not been that long ago we knew what brought that to the forefront. Okay. Mr. Goodman, question. And maybe this is more for you. Is there. Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> no, you cannot. So I'm, I'm reading both ordinances. So my question is is even though everything is lumped together, under definition of yard waste, since really the primary focus is leaves, would it be worth 
revisiting the repeal of the ordinance and make it specific to just pulling the leaves out. I don't, the way it's written, I don't know that it's even possible since it's all lumped into one. Or, at the council's pleasure, if Dwayne and the Board of Works could come up with a policy to present as here's our policy in lieu of repealing this as opposed to just carte blanche repealing it without a policy in place. I don't know. Wait a second. You're, you're, you're referring to the ordinance that's passed in 2014. Correct. That's, that's not what they're repealing. They're repealing this section. They're repealing code 5050. This. Yes. So, so the rest the of this would be okay. The, the definition would remain in place. Okay. So that section. doesn't change that. It wouldn't change it. Okay. No. All it, all it would do is vacate just uh, that perception okay so i don't know if that clarifies it for everybody else that's why i wanted was asking the question because like brian said you are only removing the piece about the professional services all the rest of it stays in place so it's just that's what but the whole that's, thing's been about yeah and i think it gets confusing and it's going to be confusing i think to the public as well if we aren't clear like Ruth said, you know, it's it's all about communication, but every we've got everything kind of all grouped together, and I can see how that can be confusing. I'm just throwing thoughts out there for you guys as ideas. If you'd rather see a policy in place first, so that, that you know what it looks like, I don't know, or is it at this point because we know specifically it's only professional services, and we just need to make sure we communicate that. So we've got less than a page now. Uh, I guess I'd like to hear Mr. Goodman read it in its entirety this time. The repealed ordinance? <laughs> it is. It is very short. There's not much to that. Because okay. right. it literally just repeals section okay. 50 of the code. <laughs> and it's not specific what type of waste. this again in the future for some point because there'll be people massaging and taking advantage this thing was written because people were taking advantage initially in the, in the previous administrations yeah <laughs> are those people still alive yes <laughs> my recollection it was a particular people <laughs> and we, we, well then we had a lot of collateral damage with the policy that's a, some, the assumption that it was but I don't know. I mean, who in the heck writes a policy for one person? That's what uh, we've got people like him you know, down here for. So, okay. Um, is there a motion to have a second reading, or do you want some action on the current writing? Uh, There's been a motion made for the reading as entirety. Is there a motion for the reading of in its entirety? Yeah. Is that Bob's motion? Or do you that motion? 2023, mm -hmm. which isn't the previous one. So you want that one right? What you're saying? <coughs> which one? Wow. How, how, what you haven't How's done? your voice tonight? Uh, <laughs> I think he wants the whole, Wait. The whole thing. For sure. No, I think he was just talking Christmas about the one that you write in right there for the, the leaves is what the major part of this discussion is all about. Is that? Because this one is just repealing 50-50. It's too short. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Two minutes. Uh, second. That's my motion. Hold on. For which reading? For the second reading. Thank you. And a second. I'll second. Three okay. seconds. Those in favor for the second reading? Okay. Go for it. Ordinance number 4 2023, and it's repealing ordinance 4 2014, whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that certain portions of the Rochester City Code related to removal of waste by the City of Rochester repealed. Therefore, be ordained the Rochester Code 5050 and title removal of yard waste created by ordinance 4 2014 is hereby repealed. Okay. Any discussion? Andy, would it be best to have the policy? set forth before taking this action because if we take this action 
there would be a period where it's suspended and there's, I'm assuming we can move pretty quickly on that policy. Well, since in that period of time, you have no policy, but it's subject to the decision of the department head who is in charge. So you really, it that way. I mean, there, there, there's no null period where you have no policy. You just don't have a studied written policy through the board of works. You have whatever the department head wakes up decides to do tomorrow is your policy because you don't have it in an ordinance and you don't have that policy. No, and, and that's not fair to the department head. Yeah. So that's, that's a uh, that's that's kind of a left-handed approach, throwing it over to the department head. <coughs> so, I, I so it's, I would, so. it's their role to make the policy. Is that it's a board of works. It's a board. We're I mean, just, we're just throwing it. We're just taking, we're okay. turning it to the board of works, right? That's and they jump till this small to make a policy if they want to make a policy. It's no, different. We still got, got time. And the leaves are. We got. We're bagging. Ahead. We're bagging leaves now. We're do. We're picking up. That's not going to change till this fall. So the Board of Works, if they want to make a policy, they can make a policy this fall. But where did the, the statement from the department head come in? Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making the point that anything you don't have an ordinance on, Board of Public Works can make a policy. Anything you don't have an ordinance on, the Board of Public Works has not made a policy on, by default, is in the hands of the department head. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 We can just yeah, the board, the board of Public board Works could make a policy at its next meeting. Or at okay. So board of Works backs out, it's up to the <laughs> department head. Okay. Uh, any motion for the third reading? So move by title only. Second. Okay, those in favor? All right, by title only. Ordinance number 4 2023, and ordinance repealing ordinance 04 2014. Okay, uh, we'll have a motion to adopt the ordinance. for a uh, fee waiver of permit fees from the Rochester City Building Code to be used by the Veterans of Foreign Wars. The waiver will be valid only for the $30 Rochester City Building Permit fee payable to the Fulton County Plan Commission to remove and repair two sheds at the following address of 1703 Federal Drive, Rochester. They're going to remove and repair the sheds that's on the property. Actually, I believe they applied for a variance also. So all of those fees are requested to be waived. Have, have they had their hearing for the variance? Next month. Next month. I'll still make a motion to uh, waive the fee for the VFW. Second. Second. Garrett makes the motion. Goodman seconded. Todd in third. Those in favor? Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you for a very tough job. Hey, you get a lot of calls. I do. <laughs> I have one more thing real quick, if you guys don't mind. Uh, would you like to floor me? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Um, Shawna and I talked a while back um, about Wabash Avenue, that little stretch that's zone industrial. We talked about... I don't know where the conversation come up on her end, I forget, but rezoning that to a little <coughs> a little less heavy commercial area. And I brought that up to my plan commission last night. Um, and I told them I was going to talk to you guys, but they also suggested I talk to Fedco as well. Um, but our thoughts was, it's all industrial right now. It's just this, I don't know if you can see it, just where the old harsh effort marks was all the way down to the four-way stop. That's all industrial. And my thought was maybe rezone it to general commercial. Um, still be a commercial district, but it wouldn't allow quite as heavy commercial entities as industrial does, considering it's surrounded by all residential right now. Um, so just kind of food for thought. I brought it up to the Plan Commission. Um, then they thought maybe Fedco might want to get involved in it to see what their thoughts were. He's back there somewhere. Um, 
to see what their thoughts were of changing it from industrial to general commercial. Still be a commercial use, just a little less heavy. Um, industrial allows a lot more heavy uses than general commercial would. I remember what brought it up. There was a prospect, and they came and inquired about the area. Uh, they would have a lot of heavy truck traffic. And so they were trying to be proactive because of the residential area. I mean, that's what started that. I know we so talked about it a while back, but yeah, it's, I, it's just, been a little while. <laughs> yeah, and I just brought it up to the Planning Commission last night, and I sent shot over the differences between industrial and general commercial, and we just haven't had a chance to get back and talk about it. So, good for thought there. Um, Think about it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I understand the heavy truck going through there. Yeah. But. And I can send you guys the industrial and the general commercial to kind of compare the lists of what's allowed now. So if someone came in for a permitted use under that industrial, you know, they can go in. So um, kind of saving the residential, if something heavy did want to come in there, I had a lot of hateful people giving me some phone calls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you got the Safeway building there, the old Safeway building. Uh, it's, it's highly possible. They've been doing some work on it. Yeah worked on the roof, got some things straight around there that I could sell for some industrial use. Yeah, it could. Um, and general commercial allows, you know, some, a lot of the stuff would be under special exception. So, you know, like for instance, a truck terminal, it's a special exception. So it would go in front of the BZA before, you know, to get approval. And then the neighbors would have a chance to speak up. And, I don't know if Michael's had any activity on that, but that, that build has, the, the uh, Safeway building there has a railroad spur that goes inside it that feeds the railroad right there. It's highly possible if that building was upgraded somewhat, that, that could be very marketable. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. If you're asking a question, I think that we should discuss that, yes. Yeah. I think we have to begin thinking in a new direction and in a new way, um, especially with these two EV plants coming in. Um, we are going to have to open up a lot of properties and uh, start having inventory that we don't have right now. And if it takes changing uh, zoning into that, then that's what we need to look at. So yeah, I'd be I'd be very interested in having a discussion about this. Well, I looked for contact information for you today, but I wasn't able to find it. Well, so. we lost the domain site, I think. Yeah, I clicked today. on it. And uh, it was, I've got a card out in the car. We'll no get good. Okay. <laughs> okay, and that is all I had. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Okay, Michael, you might as well take the floor. You're next. Ago, came to you and told you that Blacker was looking very good. Probably have it done, but well, not probably. The plan right now is to have it in full operation by the end of the uh, year this year. Um, NIPSCO is putting in the utilities, and I gave you a map. I hope you have it. And um, they're asking for a down payment out of FedCo. All we have is administrative funds and whatnot. Um, the county has given us half of what we need, so I'm here tonight to ask you for the other half, which is $33,342.93. You get that shot? 33, 342.93. You got it. Um, I'm open to questions. What gets it started this is we have the, the grant we have the money we just need the down payment to get this uh, with let's go to get this going this is just going to be for the gas line yeah and 
none of it's been installed on Blackburn yet. I'm sorry. None of it's been installed. There, there's not partial down down the road. It's just still on Fourth Street. Yeah. What they're what they're going to wind up doing, you know, where the road, the good road ends and it becomes the bad road. They're starting at that level and going straight, paved the whole lot, put the gas in, and it'll be a completed industrial park by the end of the year. So what's the total on that? $33.24,293. I'm sorry. The 33 would be the total, or the 33. No, it's half. half. The, the county. I approached the county. They've already given us the money. I'm just waiting on the checks to be cut. Uh, you want to say something? <laughs> right. We have funds in the heat of the kill. Yes. Projects, the one outside city limits, correct? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's our um, 
as far as, I don't even know which code that is, not building, what is that other? Well, for the comprehensive plan, it's just kind of a guideline on how we would like things to go. So it's not really a code that you're breaking, per se, but um, it's just the thought of how you want your area to grow. Um, and that's just something I know it's been talked about a long time ago. I don't think it's been talked about for a while. And I would have to yeah. look. I know Dwayne Border had brought it up before mm -hmm. that there is, there are pieces in our city code that does say when we extend services, <coughs> properties are going to be annexed. Again, this goes long before this administration. I mean, this has kind of been one of those things that's been happening, and I've been chomping at the bit because it it frustrates me because we financially, if we don't annex, we don't grow and we don't gain any additional revenue. So we're willing to hand over utilities. Well, we do. We do get an additional fee amount for some utilities that go outside the city. We're able to Correct. bill at a higher rate, but that's not like, yeah, that tax is coming your way. Yeah. But it, one, it is, it's kind of a chicken and the egg kind of thing. So we annex, that, we extend, we is also that what we want to do? We want to approach Vetco and, and start the annexation process that, of that? I mean, now would be the time because there aren't multiple owners mm -hmm. when you have yeah. them. You, then you've got a problem. Correct, because annexation laws have changed drastically. I mean, just in the 12 years I've been here, they have gone from kind of, sort of, okay, easy, to extremely difficult. I certainly am not the authority, and I'm certainly not the decision maker on this, but I can advise you from the financial side of it that it would benefit the city if we were to start. I will tell you that's in a TIF district, if I it remember is right. It yes. is. And we are losing our butt. It's costing us money to to pay that. Mm -hmm. We don't get enough money out of the TIF district. We have to come up with money to pay for the sewer project. Correct. So. And that would be something, and I don't know. I don't know how all well that works and figures in. Exactly. Well, and that's a good point, too, because an annexation situation there may be taking over that debt as well. I don't uh, know. I don't know I don't know about that legally, but what it could potentially do with the TIF district is uh, a lot of my experience with economic development is, is when you say it's within city, it's annexed into the city and you're offering city services, it bumps the value of it up people are more willing to buy because they know they're going to get city services. So whether that increases and, and gets more movement out there a lot faster, I don't know. But it's, again, I, I'd say I'm not sure where that authority falls, whether it falls to the council. Tony Perkins, what, what is your thoughts? Well, which part? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> In terms of the annexation, you're, you're right. About the only annexation, frankly, worth attempting is a super voluntary annexation at this point, where, where all the parcel owners um, essentially you want to be in the city. Petitioners hold yep. consent to the annexation. Um, the uh, uh, one, one, if, if, yes, one approach is to, to uh, communicate with, with FITCO about, uh, uh, about that. Another would be to condition your motion upon uh, uh, FEDCO uh, uh, either uh, uh, consenting if asked <clears throat> or petitioning if asked for annexation for any of those parcels. Um, you, you might, if, you're, if you go down that road, you might want to think about also a condition that should they convey any of the properties between now and a certain date, conditioned upon that conveyance is that the new owner will not, uh, will consent to an annexation or, or sign a petition of asset. So, I mean, you could get, you could pass your motion for funding with that as a condition. Well, I think we need to get the question answered whether to make sure we're not opening ourselves up on the tip district somehow. Yeah, I, we, I, I wouldn't address that in the motion hall, but, but yeah, that, that doesn't, uh, probably need to get that answer. Yeah, I, I don't know if the existence of the district prohibits the annexation. It would not shock me if it does. It would not. It would not 
trucking if it's a it's prohibition. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> but I think it, I'm with you, Bob, on that. I think that's the first step. So if we made a motion to the that we would like to fund that with the condition of Super, what do you call it? A super, super voluntary. Super voluntary. Super voluntary from Bedco to be annexed at, to the city. Contingent on finding out the details of the tip history. So basically, put two conditions on it. Yeah. Now it it's, it's, it uh, does it still qualify for super voluntary? You have two two clients who bought property out there, right, Michael? Yeah. Um, so they'd be part of it as well. I have to talk with them about this. Um, speaking just off the top of my head at the moment, if it improves the value of the property situation, I'd be really surprised that they would find it. Um, but I, I'd want to talk with them first and, sure. and get the answer. What's your deadline on, yeah, on this? This contract, this contract goes up on the 27th of September. Okay? Um, September. September. It was a 90-day contract. We got it in June. Okay. Check your start time. Get some questions to answer. Yeah. We should, we should be able <coughs> to get all the answers in, in time for next month's meeting. And solve that problem. I mean, it's not going to be difficult. This couple of phone calls. And the <coughs> Twenty seventh is the day after our September meeting. It came to the eleventh hour. We do it at the full moon. Well, we could have a special meeting. Sure, sure, sure. But we should know that. Maybe we should have a two meeting before. So, who's investigating the TIF district? That sounds like. <laughs> I think you can volunteer for that. Didn't you? I think I would volunteer. Yandy, Yandy, Yandy. See, it's always mentioned. Down the table. Goodman has moved to close the nomination. Thanks, Brian. Okay, uh, Michael, while you're while you've got the floor, would you like to give us a little bit of a report? I was going to say that there's a motion on the floor, so. There is, is there a motion on the floor. I'm is, sorry. Was you making a motion or? I think I was. If that gets it, keeps it moving, and would you like to restate that, please? Okay. So I move that we go ahead and fund it as to the dollar amount that's stated, with the conditions of that Fedco and other business owners super uh, acquiesce super to volunteer. become super yeah. volunteer yeah. Yeah. to be annexed. Second. Condition would be that the TIF district doesn't cause some unknown issue that we have. Financially. Well, financially. Or otherwise. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second for that? Second. Ruth seconds it. Those in favor? Okay. Yes. Michael, would you, uh, would you want to give us a little update on Fed Go while you're here? I'll give you a real quick um, single thing. For you. Um, the housing symposium um, is coming up. Uh, we have a tentative date right now, September the 14th, and um, between 1 30 and 4 o'clock. I have a site, it's not nailed down yet, so I don't want to explain it. Um, but it's open to the public, everybody can come. Um, it's going to be advertised all over the place, and the all this work that's been done up today uh, will be presented and uh, you're going to be asked for input, what you like, what you don't like. I mean, it's just going to be a general free-for-all good meeting. They've, I've seen what they've done, uh, some videos of it, and so um, just put that on your calendar because you know, you've all been invited. You just, it'll come from the hub group is where it's going to come from and, and get things done. So, I'm sorry, Michael, that was what was the date? Uh, September 14 right now from 1 30 to 4. And the chamber and I are working on that together as partners. So, um, and that's, I'll leave you with that for right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we've got a visitor from the Compassionate Healthcare, Mary Kay. If you'd like to take the floor and speak to us. First, I guess, first of all, tell us why you're here. Well, I'm here to ask for money. But before I do that, I would just like to share why it is that we are an asset to exactly. the community. Um, we, I provided you with our annual report and with stats as of June 30, uh, just right before the meeting tonight. Um, I have been there for 10 years, and in that 10 years, we've seen a lot of growth. We offer an integrated health care to those who are uninsured in Fulton County. And what that means is we provide medical, dental, vision, uh, mental health, and medications to uh, people who do not have health care insurance. A couple of things we've heard recently is all of our patients should qualify for Medicaid. That is not correct. Um, a stipulation of our patients is they can have no insurance. And as of January 1st, every patient has to go through claim aid at the hospital to determine if they are eligible for Medicaid. If they are, they are moved out of the clinic and put on Medicaid. Um, the second thing that we hear um, is that our patients don't work and don't try to make their uh, ends meet. That is, again, not true. Uh, we hover right around 60% of our patients who are working. Most are working one or two jobs. They are lower paid people. We take people up to 300% of the federal poverty guideline. And so these people are trying to make ends meet, but often they'll tell us their paycheck barely covers their expenses. They don't have money for a health care policy. Now, why is it important? Because unreimbursed care at the hospital costs all of us money. Um, and prior to January 1st of this year, the hospital offset our budget at 50%, feeling like we more than give them back that return on their dollar. Um, you all know the hospital is in a financial crunch at the time, so they are trying to uh, look where they can cut costs, and part of that was us. Uh, they have given us $75,000 for the last several years, which is right at 50% of our budget. And this year, 2023, they dropped that to 50,000. Um, and so we were challenged on the fly uh, to find a way to replace that. At mid-year, we are already 20,000 in the hole for this year, and we run on a very lean budget. So you know, there isn't a lot of room to go back and say, where are we gonna make that up? The county did give us 15,000, and in the 10 years that I've been part of the clinic, we have never asked the city for any money to operate. We do run on donations, grants, um, and we, you know, we try to be as self-sufficient as possible. We just raised $19,000 at our golf outing. That $19,000 deficit is after we made that $19,000 profit on our, our golf outing, the highest money we've ever made. So we work hard to keep ourselves uh, independent. We, this year, have already had 30 patients who told us they would have gone to the emergency room if we were not open. Um, so right there, if that was $1,000 per person, that's about 30,000 in bad debt we've eliminated. One or two um, COPD patients that go into the hospital for pneumonia, uh, that's easily 20,000 per person. That's all bad debt. Um, you know, again, the hospital is so vital to our community that we want to be really good stewards of, of the money that they give us. Uh, we've learned to stand on our own two feet this year. We're doing our own labs. Uh, I'm an old lab director, so that was fairly easy for us to do. We are paying for those labs uh, for our patients and not putting that burden on the hospital. Uh, but we, we do you know, worry about the continued funding. Currently, Medicaid is going through their roles and disenrolling patients from Medicaid, and many will not know that until they go to seek care and they'll be told they are no longer on Medicaid. The COVID pandemic really shut that down, so that annual renewal um, that's required was, was kind of abated for that time, and now April 1st, they started that. So thousands of Hoosiers have already been taken off of Medicaid, and we see our roles coming back up. 
So I would say we're, we're a jewel for this community. We are a one and done. You will not find another clinic like us in any surrounding county. Uh, most of those are sliding fee scales. Uh, our dental program is stellar. Our quality is stellar. I think we're a great asset. We just need funding to help continue to serve the people we do. And it's, it's been quite a service. I, uh, I would hate to guess how many people's lives you've actually saved because you've discovered something that would not have been discovered. And you hear about it, you're, you probably hear about it too. Um, in your line of work? One of our most difficult was a husband of a patient. Uh, we qualify a household by their income. And he said, oh, I, I, my wife's the one who needs help. I, I don't need anything. I'm, I'm healthy as can be. And we said, well, we're free. Why don't you turn down free health care? So Jamie saw him, ordered some labs. He was full of cancer and died six weeks later. Now, we didn't save his life but we took care of him to the best of our ability for the time he had left. That was one of our harder ones. Yeah. And he asked that day when we told him he was terminal, could he go back to work? And Jamie said, do you understand the gravity of your disease? Uh, we have seen since the pandemic um, higher acuity. Our, our medical directors tell us, they, uh, in other words, how sick are our patients our medical directors tell us we see so much higher acuity because these people wait because they don't want to incur this huge bad debt. Many don't. And so they wait until they're really, really ill. We have diabetics come in that haven't had their meds in a couple of months. Uh, we just, we feel we do so much for these patients that we have. Well, God bless you. I was sitting up here 20 years ago city council when uh, it entered. Absolutely. Said right there we're about where you are and stood up and said we want to start this situation. Explained what it was and you know, it was like well not sure if you're going to give some money for that or whatever but uh, he took it uh, on his own grabbed his bootstraps yeah. and brought it to reality. Absolutely. Now uh, do you see the hospital slipping farther and farther away from supporting him? Well, Ellen and I meet next week, and I would guess the 50000 that we got this year probably will be tough for me to get that next year. But, you know, again, we, we've learned to stand on our own two feet um, and ask for money from avenues we have. Uh, we look for grants all the time for what we do. Um, but I, I think it's worrisome. They were doing everything for free for us, which was totally unbelievable. A million dollars worth of care every year. Unbelievable. Um, and they said that ended January 1st. So uh, again, we had to look for other opportunities. We are paying half of the bills for patients now for things that they need. Currently, we have a gentleman looking at a total knee replacement of probably about $7,000 and they are giving a huge discount to our patients, but it's not free anymore. So we've, we've had to come to a whole new model to uh, work on this year. But again, it's, it's, it's been good. We've had a lot of growth, and I, I still would firmly believe that patients every day tell us they don't know what they would do without us. Well, and God bless your staff. They've been around for- Jamie, darn she's near the million. The whole tenure they've been there, yeah. Yeah, Jane, Jane came on day one, and she is the heart and soul of our clinic. She's an amazing provider, and Linda and I are just two old gals that are retired that love doing what we do. So, and Dr. O'Brien. Dr. O'Brien's our medical director. He came sort of uneducated, and after a few weeks, he said, "I can't believe what you guys do. You know, it's just it's really amazing." And dental really is one of our biggest issues. Uh, you know, you wake up one morning with huge dental pain, you go to the hospital, they give you an antibiotic, and they, you know, give you something for pain, but they don't fix that dental issue. We have nearly totally eliminated in the last eight years anybody going to the hospital for dental pain. We get more calls for the dental we do than anything else. So you're, you know what you're looking for? 
Again, we're 19,000 in the hole at mid-year. Um, the county gave us 15,000 last year. I would like for the city to at least match that or or try to help us offset the 19,000 we're already in the hole for this year. Council, thoughts, questions? What money do we have, Sean? Yeah. Well, first of all, I would think the get some rather large donations from the drugstores, you know, around there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Harry. How are you? Harry. I get him a great child. Harry's right behind me. Let him. me tell him. And, <laughs> and he was dozing. So he <laughs> woke right up. He is very generous. We use I'm the sure. 340B, sure. uh, which is a great federal program. And Harry does more than his share, I would Great. say that. So do you, you know, you hear on TV, if you can't afford your meds, AstraZeneca. Uh, absolutely. Pharmacies are amazing to well, us. Well, and Harry, you're the leader of our health department, right? You're the head of the health department. I'm vice president. You're the vice president. Well, thank you for your service there as well. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Shada? Well, kind of like I talked about with Fedco, one of the things I I would ask is if you would give me an opportunity to actually put together complete numbers for all of our projects we currently have open that are coming so that I would feel better about exactly how much we have to be able to offer. Um, the last thing I want to do is if we commit 33,000 to Fedco for a gas line, we commit 15,000 there, and we come up 20,000 short on some of our projects, especially because we do have some variables. And Rick, you can speak on this one as well, especially with Apache Drive. We we really aren't 100% certain where that one's gonna fall. So if you would allow me the month to the next meeting, and Mary, I apologize for putting you, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I would much rather do a financial analysis and bring it to you so that we are all talking the same numbers versus just carte blanche, do it, and be done. Have you depleted the mayor's promotion fund? Uh, I have not, but you do not have 15000 well, I know. You only start with ten. What have I got left? Uh, I honestly don't know because I don't have that okay. in front of me. Okay. I'm going to say with because you did fireworks and did some other things, I think you're under five. But um, that would be what I would ask, just so that I make, I feel better about making sure we cover what we've already committed to. And then if then we could also have that other conversation about future funding, because if this is something that, if you're doing kind of a, an ask of now and maybe future, then that would give the council an opportunity to, to look at our budget as well. Because yeah. we still have time to make a change to that budget before next year. Well, as I mentioned, 20 years ago, when Dick's still there with his hand down. I mean, there was a lot of this up here, you know, and it was, gee, you know, we don't, we're not a charitable operation to do that. But there's been a lot of change. You certainly have proven yourself in the community big time. And uh, we do have other line items in the budget, like uh, the animal shelter and Fedco and other things of this nature. We do. I, I personally, even 20 years ago, I thought, wow, this probably be a very good thing to participate in somewhat. A month would also give me the opportunity to have met with the hospital and see what we're looking at. You know, if, if I go there next week and they say, we'll give you 10,000, we're really in trouble. So yeah, that's, that. that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. So if I understand you correctly, Mary, you're looking, you want us to match what the county that contributed. Match of 15, that's what they gave us. I take more. <laughs> when she initially called me and we talked, it was 25. So she's she's edging edging out. Okay. Uh, and what's it take to get something to put in the budget for next year? Well, we have to. It would just to have a. Uh, I was I, here's one of the things I would say because we've already had our budget session discussion. Our August meeting is our public hearing on the budget. So mm -hmm. if you want to make changes between yeah, now and then, yeah, we would probably need to do a special session or be an addendum before the, the yeah, public meeting. Yeah, or you guys meeting. throw me you know, how, how much time do you need to put together your numbers? Mm -hmm. How much time do you need? Well, since I'm doing payroll this week on top of my own job, 
at least give me till next week. <laughs> so I'd say if you can give me to the end of next week, I could probably pull all that together. Tomorrow at noon is up. <laughs> well, I can do my best. <laughs> We've got a few weeks. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 So Mary Kay's going to be here the next month. Mm -hmm. Can you, I was going to say, are you available next time? Good. Thank you all. I, I really feel we are blessed to have, you know, something like this for our people. Nothing worse than to wake up one morning and have an urgent medical issue and nowhere to turn. So I, I just wish more people knew about it. So yeah, well, if you can do nothing yeah. else if you leave tonight, yeah. just spread the word. It, it, it's amazing. Uh, and I, I, for one, am in that category. I've had health insurance all my life. And you can't imagine people you interface with on a daily basis who don't have any coverage at all. To take a local care of insurance them. agent said, I can provide every one of your patients with a reasonable policy. So we came out and we sat down and crunched the numbers. If you're making $45,000 and it's a family of four, which is not unusual for our community, tell me where $150 a month per yeah. person comes yeah. for health insurance and a $5,000 deductible to meet before it pays. He left being one of our biggest contributors. And yeah. he sells insurance. He sells insurance. So, you know, it's just not something affordable for everyone. Yeah. What is affordable? It's different for each of us. Yeah. And our patients are working hard to make a living. They deserve health care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay comes down to Christine. Haven't seen you for a while. I know. I know you miss me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> I feel pretty good about my presentation after FedCo's 33 and Compassionate <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare's uh, 15 plus. Are you still in the mayor's promotional fee range? <laughs> <laughs> you, I guess you got my letter and my budget for the festival in case any of you have forgotten what I'm here for. <laughs> um, my ask is for $6,350. That's the total of the music for the festival. Um, and that way the city has completely sponsored the music for the festival. We have the RDP money set aside, so I'm requesting that total. So, how much of the RDP money do we still have? Actually, that one item, they haven't, uh, Harry has not asked for any money this year. So, we we've got the full 25000 left for them for RDP. So, you're asking for the 6000 to come out of that? That's already. That's already a line item for us. So should have already been given anyway. We don't. We don't get the money up front. We basically come in to the council with a request whenever we have a project that we're trying to fund. So it's kind of a um, line item request off of the allocated funds. It's a draw. It's a draw. Mm -hmm. yeah. So no reason to say no. Correct. Mm -hmm. I did have a question on your budget. Yeah. Um, I was up there on the revenue section, you had six tables, and I'm doing this for memory, about ARC sponsors, and, I, and it was $3,000. So Correct. Is that, to, I, you know, I think it was listed as an expense versus, is it listed as an expense or is it income? Um, when it, you get sponsors. It would be income if everybody sponsored a table. Last year, not everyone sponsored a table. Okay. So. This year, I think all the tables are going to be sponsored. Great. I make a motion that we allow the funding to go forward. Second. Make a motion made by Todd, seconded by Brian. Those in favor? Okay. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what's the, what is this? This okay, year, uh, third year? Third year. For you. Yeah, thank you. For you. You become to see the Board of Works, right? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the month, whenever the meeting is. Uh, Want to get just make a note to put her on the agenda. Well, we've got one this Thursday. If you want to come this week, I mean, you might as well come see us twice. <laughs> Thursday it is. Wow, you guys may be sick. Is that at five though? Yes, yes. that one's at five. Is that a, <coughs> would you rather go out two weeks? Is that one at five as well? Well, yeah, yeah. It'd be a little yeah. extra time to get your stuff. Uh, well, I'm just updating everybody, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have any you don't have any changes, do you? No. I just I have to come and remind uh, that I need Dwayne for the barrels, the barrels, the uh, picnic tables. Plan, Brandy and Tom. Yeah. That will go to them. Yeah, it's the same as mm -hmm. last year. Um, I would say this Thursday. Then. Well, this Thursday, but are you able to be there, or will you be if if you be there? What time? I guess I should say because I'm looking at you thinking you're going to be. Working. I can leave work at five. Oh, okay. that's so. We'll then, just, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. When you get here, we'll just okay work in, even though you'll be the first on the agenda. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, be a little more flexible with that. Can't I'm we just give her a hard time. Yeah. We can do anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you need? Do any of you need to know, or that you specifically need for the board report? What's what's the date again? August twenty sixth. Oh, the twenty sixth. Okay. Eleven to eleven. Yes. Eleven to eleven. What did last year? Uh, all these stuff said eleven to eleven. Because I was there a very long time after you'll eleven. Be, you'll be there past eleven. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a long At the end time. of the <laughs> last music group, I was like, "You need to stop singing because I really want to go home." <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Ordinances and resolutions. We've uh, discussed the 4 2023. Take care of that. Ordinance 6 2023 modification to city code 99.01, the unsafe building code, which we touched on a little bit. Uh, would, uh, would I have a motion? <laughs> for the first reading, moved by, by Todd Garrett for the first reading uh, in its entirety. Or was it by title only? By in its entirety. Those in favor? Okay, go for it. Ordinance number 6 2023, an ordinance modifying the unsafe building ordinance, whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that certain portions of the Rochester City Code related to the unsafe building ordinance of the City of Rochester should be repealed. Therefore, we ordain that Rochester Code 99.01 entitled Definitions is hereby modified such that definition for hearing authority shall now read as follows. Hearing authority, the Board of Public Works and Safety shall serve as a hearing authority for all disputes from the rules and regulations set forth in this chapter. Okay, any discussion? Okay. Uh, any uh, chance of suspending the rules and having the second and third reading? So moved. <coughs> okay, moved by Goodman, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Second reading by title only. Ordinance number 6 2023, an ordinance modifying the unsafe building ordinance. Any discussion? I have a motion for the third reading, title only. So moved. Great. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance number 6 2023, an ordinance modifying the unsafe building ordinance. Okay, uh, do I have a motion for the passing of 6 2023? I'll make that motion. Goodman made the motion. Uh, Wilson seconded. <coughs> Those in favor, and it's unanimous. Thank you, Jim, gentlemen, and lady. Uh, department heads, we have one here tonight. Andy, thank you. You're going to get the attendance award. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but it's sure, it sure made all of us feel good to have you sitting here. Uh, month of June, 19 accidents, 55 warnings, uh, 50 offenses, 35 case reports, 529 calls for service, 19 lockouts, four towed vehicles, 22 people incarcerated, and then yeah, the crimes that they were lodged for. Other than that. So I won at the Academy should graduate to mid August and we're still trying to hire one that's gonna replace the one that's gonna be leaving. Okay. And we 
have 18 golf carts registered, correct? Yeah. 18. Okay. Any questions for Andy? Wow. That comment about Andy, for those of you that were relatively new, uh, about six years ago, we were glad to have him here. He helped remove an individual from the room. Just so happened Sheriff Sailors was here that night too. So one was on one side and the other one was on the other side and the guy's feet never touched the ground. <laughs> awfully, uh, awfully glad to have you here that night. It was made very clear that I could never miss another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> In the kind of uniform with a gun. <laughs> okay, anything for Chief? Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, Reports of committees, uh, Harry, anything on RDP? Um, we've just been busy. I haven't really given a report to the council. Um, I really came here to support Christine, but um, she, she does is doing a tremendous job. It does definitely, it's something that- uh, Well, I see she left, so she wasn't here to support you. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, doing these events, is what people don't realize is that um, it's easy to talk about trying to do things, but when you come down to an event like that, you almost have to take, she has to like, take a week vacation oh, yeah. before that event, sure. just because you have to be full time, you know, and there is no calling off, you know, if somebody gets sick or whatever, it, it is extremely uh, challenging. I think, you know, the community at large would really benefit by considering maybe at some point looking at um, either through RDP or something is, is maybe funding a person that could do events for the community. Um, just something to ponder, but maybe it could be a shared expense, but you know, somebody that could, and this wouldn't just be for downtown, this could be for any, any events in the city and we could do a lot more. As we're starting to get more activities downtown, it would be nice, it'd be nice to do a lot more um, public promotions to improve quality of space and, and just have more events but you know it's just a daunting task to do this completely with the volunteer board um, just a little nugget of thought we also uh, business retention and expansion our economic vitality group has been working with Purdue really pre-pandemic on a study of downtown and Rochester in general about um, basically the state of what's going on in our, our community economically and then COVID hit and the whole thing kind of crashed and burned for a while but it um, the uh, Purdue got back on it and dusted it off and, and redid some surveying and it was re released that study if anybody wants a copy of that but it's pretty interesting you know but what it does kind of show is that you know things like um, you know the average income of a family in this community it typically uh, they, they recommend that a, a family has 25% of their of their income be for housing um, uh, and that leaves 75 percent for everything else obviously in, in full county it's about 50 percent of their income goes to housing and housing related expenses um, and part of that is because of the you know the wage levels are down and the housing costs are high because of demand and there are a lot of houses going up, but there are a lot of them are way out of the price range of the average person that lives here. You know, we are having a housing study done, but that is definitely uh, highlighted in that. We also have a lot of people that leave the community to work outside the community, which um, if the pretty guy actually says it's good because that means they get their money and they bring it back to our community. Um, but also, I think that could leverage we could leverage those people and try to figure out what industries they are going out of town for, and. You know, as we, while we have very low unemployment in this area, you could potentially say, well, we have a thousand people leaving town for X, and maybe find a company that would be willing to come here that might be able to um, offer those people employment. Um, those are all things that kind of came out of that. We're looking at putting together maybe a, we've had a very successful facade grant program that we've helped with awnings and signs. We're thinking about approaching um, the, uh, the Redevelopment Commission for possible funding um, to help building owners with upstairs apartment renovation, mostly focusing on electric and sewage. A lot of these old park, a lot of these old buildings have very old infrastructure um, and not tube wiring and not safe. 
and it's really a big deterrent on, on creating housing or there's a lot of available apartments in these upstairs buildings that aren't being utilized and maybe if we can provide a program that might incentivize and, and um, some of that remodeling might help some building owners uh, get off dead center to uh, invest in that upstairs apartment well, those are just kind of some of the things we're working on what do you know about the Bailey's building it just sold I believe yeah, I believe, I believe the Edith Rose people that have been my tenant across the street uh, okay. uh, are, are purchasing that building. I've got great plans for it. Okay. Great. I think well, that's my hope coming up. Yeah. Any uh, questions for Harry? Thanks, Harry. Sorry. Uh, Ruth, anything on the Area Plan Commission? Um, we just went over some new budget, some new you know, how much do you charge for certain permits and everything. We talked a lot about wind, solar, and um, uh, electric chargers, you know, to make sure that we're actually charging enough comparable to other communities around if people want to do that and, and put those in what's the difference between small and large and a farm because reality is is that we will probably someday have to discuss putting a solar farm in or a wind farm somewhere because other communities are and then are we asking enough out of the company that wants to put those in and saying the right terminology certainly enough information out there of people who are doing it that uh, there's information being collected for sure. Now we're, we're working with somebody up in uh, Plymouth and that that, that have, knows what they're talking about and guiding us to make sure that we have it right because we are of course just like everything else in Rochester we don't charge enough for anything so we need to make sure that we have the fees there to cover our expenses instead of continually putting money out of our pockets and our budgets. Well, you know, I heard you make a comment about our community and, and the study and the incomes and such. You know, Akron has a higher median income than our Reds of Rochester. Are you aware of that? You probably were since you're in Akron. Not really. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of them work in Warsaw. And that, yeah, and well, that live in Akron, Akron's. It's a company town. town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why a lot, there's not as many people living in Warsaw, working in Warsaw here. Any uh, questions for Ruth? Thanks, Ruth. Anything you want to add to the FedCo presentation? Uh, I don't think I'll mention as we, FedCo recently uh, contracted with Baldwin Accounting to do our books. The billing and all that. Okay. Uh, Redevelopment Commission meets tomorrow. Uh, Park Board, Bob. Uh, they had a long meeting on July 10th. They covered a lot of ground. Uh, they had a couple of presentations. Uh, I believe it was Diane Groove and Kim Landis. I think came and informed the group that they got a grant from NCIF for their butterfly garden of $2,000. Baths. I thought they were by the landing uh, across from the Dairy Queen there. And they also gave approval to the Purple Tent Ministry to continue to be using the main uh, park. Uh, and they're going to service it. They gave approval for that. Anthony talked about getting uh, getting some equipment in. Gator is coming in that they've been waiting on and a mower. I think they're still waiting on golf carts. I think they're still expecting those coming this fall. Uh, the putting green that's over by the pool has got severely damaged and tore up or vandalized. It's uh, thanks to the chance that they may open, it may be opening this week or yeah, first index within the next week. He had some concerns about disease and rough spots that he was still trying to get roughed out, but he thought by the end of the month here that he could possibly have that going. Uh, pool manager one of, uh, Megan uh, reported that they were having very good attendance at the pool. 
sounds like near record levels uh, as far as that goes this year. They've had several parties. They've replaced a diving pool board that was under warranty that uh, I guess broke, cracked when Cracked. Somebody jumped. Yeah. Uh, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> 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 So uh, they're still having problems with the pool. Uh, as far as leak, they're still trying to find a leak, uh, possibly there. They, keep, they think they've got it narrowed down, but they still haven't found it, but the water still disappears. Uh, Dwayne talked quite a bit about uh, they've ordered uh, backboards for the JC Park, and those are coming, and there's been lots of rentals of the pavilions. Well, they did. They covered a lot of ground. You know, uh, walked out of that meeting and got to thinking about that butterfly garden and those two ladies and everything that they have, you know, by donations and uh, the grants and everything. I had Kim bring me a list. They put over 15 grand into the butterfly garden. And I thought, ah, time to get this bumped up on our insurance policies. <laughs> so, yeah, they're doing some good stuff. <coughs> Any questions for Bob? Thanks, Bob. Um, BZA and Council on Aging Marty is not here tonight. Solid waste again with adoption. Todd? Always I'm not able to make those videos. Okay. Tree Board, Brian. Tree Board met July 5th. Uh, one of the first items was there noted there was a increase in the budget for next year. Yeah, I'm sure that will be used quickly enough. Will. They are working on getting previous uh, removal and pruning contracts cleared out, getting the invoices. They are postponing any new tree plantings until, until the fall when the conditions are more favorable. But not particularly the spring and summer. Newer requests are coming in on a regular basis. Um, and the next meeting is August 2nd. Okay. Okay. Anything on EMS? Well, not, not much that I can add. It hasn't been in the paper, on yeah. news, and everything else. So. The only thing I can tell you for sure is that Commissioner Rick Ranstead did not sign that first contract. <laughs> His name's nowhere on that thing. <laughs> And he's grateful of it, right? <laughs> it went from the you know, from EMS, it was, yeah, so they're down one ambulance and the whole process of how you replace it or do that to there's going to be no contract. So, yeah, it was definitely not on their calendar that quickly. Without putting you on the spot, Rick, we well, I didn't hear what he said. Oh, no, yeah, the, the, the original, when it went to the, the meeting, it was in 18 months we were going to have to do something. So we have plenty of time to do the study and figure out what we're going to do, then all of a sudden, well, you don't have 18 months, you only have six now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah my, my, and not to put you on the spot, if you don't care to answer or have that information, that's fine, but any idea when the RFPs might hit the airwaves? Yeah. Okay. Let me put on my glasses and read his timeline here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have pulled up in case you ask. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Final specifications are due September 5th, which that would be RFPs. Uh, kind of little, I got to blow it up here. Um, my they'll be plumb. Shut up. And then the proposals will be due October 13th. Uh, basically, more to contract in December to whoever um, and have them start in January is, is the his timeline. Uh, their contract is up January 15th. I think it's January 14th at 11.59 if I remember. Oh, they give time, yep. Yeah, so he says he's got enough time to get somebody in. He's got somebody that's interested um, besides just Luther. So if Luther wants to, you know, whatever. So we'll see where it goes. Okay, well thanks, appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, uh, John, uh, water board. Everything's running good. The carriage got it all hopping. Uh, as you remember about, uh, I'm thinking three months, maybe four months ago, we uh, bought a truck. Yeah. 
and it's just like a lot of our other, other departments, you know, street department and everything. We, we do use our equipment and we use it, have to get a lot of longevity out of it. And so now we need a new mini excavator. Uh, I'm happy to say we were able to get a price from New Holland at 31000 Bobcat and Warsaw is $39,060. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to see New Holland doing this because in the past, we have gone to Warsaw, to Bobcat, to buy quite a bit of our smaller equipment, Bobcat type equipment around town. And I'm glad to see New Holland getting in on this. It's, I like to see it kept right here in town. Absolutely. And uh, other than that, everything's going good. That's about all there is to it. That, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's always been a, uh, a discussion point that if you've got local vendors, even if they're a few dollars higher, they're paying taxes locally. So, you know, that's always a consideration. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Glad to see yeah. Any uh, questions for John? Okay, with uh, further ado, any other comments or anything, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Stereo. <laughs> <laughs>